So now we'll shift from developing the power of hearing to developing the powers of reflection and the powers of meditation. So come back to a meditation posture, straight back, alert focus. Revive your motivation. and shifting the mind to reflection and meditation. We meditate on perfect human rebirth in order to make the best use of our perfect human rebirth, in order to shake off any sadness, any depression, any feelings of deprivation. We fill ourselves with the gratitude, with the joy, with the depth of understanding, how very fortunate we are, how very rare these conditions are, allowing the truth of that to fill us so that we make the best of it. And so now we do a comparison, not in order to look down on others, not in order to feel puffed up, not in order to feel pressure or anxiety or expectations, but just a very objective and clear assessment of how very fortunate we are. There are four non-human states with no chance for Dharma study life forms experiencing continual pain and fear, life forms experiencing continual frustration and clinging. So we could call these hell realms we could call these hungry ghost realms, or we could just say a life that is filled with hatred is also a life of pain and fear. And a life filled with addiction is also a life filled with frustration and clinging. And if our minds were consumed by these negative states, we would have no chance to practice no space, no time, no urge. How bleak our life would be if this was the case. And neither are we animal beings with lives that are full of ignorance, not understanding mortality very clearly, not understanding interconnection except for instinctually. Just chasing pleasure, running from potential pain.
and neither are we celestial beings or people so flooded with pleasure that it doesn't even occur to them to think of others. So isolated and separate from the pain of other sentient beings, no pathways of empathy, little fuel for compassion. So just thinking how very fortunate we are not to be lost in those states, either literally or metaphorically. And then there are four human situations with no chance for Dharma study. If we were reborn in a society of quote, barbarians amongst uncivilized people in a country where religion was outlawed, kill or be killed was the law of the land, aggression and possessiveness driving all decisions of the leadership even though this is the case everywhere in some form, if we were in a specific area where this was nothing but the case, how difficult the spiritual path would be. Or it could be that we live in a place with plenty of kindness and compassionate government policies we could live in a place full of kind and ethical people, but there might not be access to teachings of an enlightened being where a Buddha hasn't obviously appeared and taught. So without coming across the Buddhist teachings or anything we might consider wisdom or Dharma, we wouldn't have any forward progress but we have met amazing tools in our life. Dharma, psychoanalytic, secular ethics. We've come across trainings and teachings of these things. And then in the older translations, they use inappropriate terminology like mentally retarded, deaf, dumb, and blind. But the point is that people with certain developmental disabilities, people with senses that aren't functioning at their maximum capability, might not be able to process Dharma teachings as easily simply because of access. And so just feeling gratitude that so far in our life, these situations are not the case. Because if they were, we might be able to practice Dharma but it would be that much more challenging. How fortunate we are to have independence. And then we're free of having instinctive wrong views. We're free of superstitious ideas generally speaking. We don't think that animal sacrifice is going to lead to liberation. We don't think that a mere outer cleansing, like bathing in a certain body of water, is going to inherently purify the mind without any other conditions. So we're free from having these instinctive wrong views these basic superstitions. If we had them, life would be so much more difficult in terms of progress on the spiritual path. And we would be much more likely to feel victims of circumstance. And so feeling so joyful to have these freedoms, however temporary, however dependently arisen, just amazing that we have these freedoms.
then shifting to think about the endowments or opportunities, the five personal ones are similar to before. We were born a human. We live in a central Buddhist region, meaning access to these teachings. We have complete and healthy sense and mental faculties, at least enough for independence and deep thought. We haven't committed any of the five heinous actions which are so damaging that our next rebirth would definitely be lower. And we have faith in the source or an instinctive belief in things worthy of respect. The Dharma, the value of ethics, the path to enlightenment. So these five give us great personal opportunity to develop our mind. And then we have five endowments or opportunities related to others. We have lived where and when a Buddha has appeared and has taught, and those teachings still exist. We take it for granted it's so easy to look up things online, to buy books, to go to classes, but this is actually very rare and incredibly precious. And we live where and when there is a Sangha community following the Buddhist teachings. How much more difficult it would be to practice if we didn't have community, if we didn't have others on the path with us. All the collaboration and collective energy we create together, incredibly powerful. So much more momentum than if we practiced alone. And we live where and when there are others with loving concern, patrons or benefactors, teachers, so we have these deep conditions to practice. So allow yourself to feel the profundity of these opportunities or endowments. Try to feel full that we have everything we need, inner and outer. Okay, so you can relax your attention. And now we'll do the dedication prayers. See you next week.